Hello everybody, this is Fred with Wentworth CCTV and today we will be covering step three or video three in our security camera installation series. And at this point, we have um, built or constructed a ethernet cable using cat five or six cable um, and the RJ plugs, uh, which, which was covered in video one. Video two, covered how to link the camera to the PoE switch or NVR utilizing the cable you made in video one. And now video three would be locating that camera that's now on your network so we can configure it for either um, the network uh, recorder, the NVR, um, or standalone viewing through a browser. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is head to Heat Vision's website. As you can see on the page here, usheatvision.com, you will see a support and resources tab and also a downloads tab. One of the options under download is tools. So we want to click tools there. Okay. So now we are in the tools portion. Um, and if we scroll down, there are many tools in this section, um, by the way, that are very useful. Um, there's a format converter um, that you can use that we will be covering in a later video that will actually convert the video you download from H.264 or H.265 compression video to a AVI file that you can play um, through media player and, and it certainly makes it easier to email files and clips um, you know to the police or insurance companies when they're in the AVI file you send them an H.264 H.265 file directly from the recorder they may not uh, know how to convert that so that's a good tool um, there's also plugins um, you'll see again, um, most of these cameras today um, use Internet Explorer when you use them in a browser. And these plugins um, are, are used to make that process seamless. When you uh, pull up a camera for the first time, it will ask you to download these plugins, and you can also get them on the website. There's a lens selection tool. Um, there's storage calculators, but the reason we came in here is SADP. This is the device locator. Um, there's a program for both Windows and Mac. We're on a Windows 10 computer, so we want the Windows file. So we'll click on that, and we will click on the executable file to install the SADP program. So you just double click that. And we get a prompt that says Heat Vision wants to download the file. Um, so obviously we'll allow that. And the download begins. Okay, so now we have downloaded the file. Um, you'll see the zip file down here. It's asking us to open it. So we will do that. Okay, so here we have uh, opened the SADP um, program. Um, and as you can see, the camera is showing online. There's one device on, it's our camera. This is the first time um, that the camera has been used. Okay, so as a result of that, um, it's inactive. Um, which simply means it's not set up. So we want to check off and select that camera. And it will say you can modify the network parameters after the device is activated. So to activate it, we need to put in a password to make sure it's secure. Um, the password can be anything you want to be. It's going to be eight digits. Um, and it's going to have um, a letter and a number. Um, so... Uh, for the sake of this, we can do W 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, and then we'll do W, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, just like that. Um, and we'll activate it. As you can see, it will come up and it will say device is, a device is activated. And it's going to bring you to a, um, a questionnaire. And what this questionnaire is, uh, it's called GUID. And it's in case you ever forget your password. Um, it will ask you a series of questions um, to let you reset the password. Um, so you can always put things that you uh, won't forget. For example, your father's name is Fred, your mother's name, mine is Marion, and I always go to my favorite game, which is football. Okay, so now if I ever forget my password, I can answer those questions and reset it. Okay, perfect. So now, as you can see, our camera is active. Um, but we want to put it in what's called DHCP mode. And what DHCP is, when a camera or any other network device is, is on your network, um, you want it to conform to your gateway um, for either your modem or your router. Um, that might be 192.168.1.1. With Comcast, it might be 10.1.10.1. .10 um, you know, with Atlantic Broadband, um, Spectrum, some other internet service providers, it will be 192.168.0.1. Um, you really don't need to get into that too much, um, but by clicking Enabling DHCP, it's going to allow that device, your modem or your router server, to assign a IP address um, to the camera and the camera is going to take it. So we're going to enable DHCP and we're going to put in our password, which is W123456789. And we're going to modify that. And now what we should see is the camera should change from 192.168.164 to whatever the network puts it on. Oh, and it changed to 192.168.061. So that is the IP address of the camera on our network. Um, and we can pull that up and view the camera using Explorer. Now it has to be Internet Explorer. It can't be Edge, it can't be Chrome, it can't be Firefox. It has to be Explorer to pull the camera up in a browser. Um, hopefully, um, firmware upgrades in the future will adjust to the newer browsers, um, but right now it's it still Explorer. So we'll go 192.168.061, and okay. So here we are at the login um, for our camera. As you can see, it's a Hikvision IP camera. We will enter the credentials that we configured when we activated the camera um, in SADP. And with any luck, we'll see the camera shop. And yes, there's our wonderful basement camera. Um, but it serves the purpose for the demonstration. Um, so once we're in the camera, this is the configuration tab, and we'll want to make a couple of adjustments. The first thing is if you saw in live view, the time is off. These cameras always default to like 1970, uh, and it thinks it's midnight. So we'll go into configuration, and we can go to our time settings, and we can sync the time with the PC time um, and it says it succeeded so if we go back to our live view we should have the right time now and lo and behold we do 
Um, a lot of times people want to change the OST or camera name on the display. You also do that in configuration tab. Um, we go to image, OSD settings, and camera name. So we could do basement shop. And then you could do text overlay. You could do the name of your business or your home. Um, we'll just put one fourth CCTV there. And we'll save the settings. Uh, it will tell you they succeeded. We go to the live view window. And here we have one more CCTV. And we have basement shop. Okay. Um, configuration settings also allow you to um, change settings. Um, so we can take snapshots um, and we can tell it which browser to save those in. Um, lots of times I'll just tell it to go to um, the desktop. Um, can reboot the camera if we need to here. Um, we already did this when we were in SADP, but you could change the camera into DHCP mode, um, which again lets your browser, uh, I'm sorry, not your browser, it lets your, um, your routing device, your modem or your router and your home or business determine the IP address of the camera. So um, once we do that in DHCP, um, I suggest leaving it at this address and unchecking DHCP. Um, and that will make this what's called the static IP. It won't change. Um, so you'll always know where to locate it in the browser. Um, and your NVR will always know which IP address it's at. Um, so we can do that. We can also adjust uh, the audio video settings in, in the configuration tab. And um, basically, um, that is going to be your bit rate, which is more or less your resolution. These cameras are 1080p, um, but they also are 720 and 960. 1080p is the highest resolution uh, available with the two megapixel cameras. Then we have 720p and 960, which is D1. Um, we can pick our picture quality from lowest to highest. Medium is a good setting. Frames per second um, can go from one all the way up to 30. Um, a lot of times people will pick around 10 um, just because if you have multiple cameras it streams better. I will tell you um, when looking at the picture there's very little difference uh, between 10 frames per second and 30. Um, when you see a difference there is, is when you zoom. Um, you can also change the KPBS um, if you like from 4,000 to about 2,000. Um, that's fine. And then there we have located our camera on our network. We know what IP address it is. We know the time. We put our OSD information. And this camera is ready to go. We can view it whenever we want online. And we can also um, attach it to a network video recorder for the cloud for video storage. And those options will be covered um, in future videos. As always, make sure you like our page, make sure you subscribe so you continue to get this content. Thank you.